I'm joined by a gentleman known as Omae Nyarandi, the Executive Secretary from the Northern Corridor. He's going to give us a deep insight into what the Northern Corridor entails. Thank you, sir, and welcome to the program. Thank you, thank sir, you. Sir. So as, you can introduce yourself, uh, tell as, us about Northern Corridor, and uh, how essential is it in, in, uh, in as far as the regional transport is concerned? Uh, first, what is Northern Corridor? Northern Corridor is the multimodal transport starting from the port of Mombasa all the way to Eastern DRC. It was started by a treaty by the six member countries. At that time there were five member countries in 1985. Those members who used the port of Mombasa. And they are Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda, DRC, and later in 2012, South Sudan was added. And the main purpose and objective of the Northern Corridor is to ensure the smooth flow of both people, that's persons, and cargo within these six member countries. The corridor is a multimodal transport, having the road, the rail, pipeline, and the inland waterways which is why we are here today. Okay, talking about the Northern Corridor, I know the Ugandan business community, they are very familiar with the Northern Corridor. So maybe you can give us an insight of, of why is it so? Uh, looking at the port of Mombasa, in 2018, the tonnage that passed in and out of the port of Mombasa was 30 million tons. 30 million tons. Out of the 30 million tons, 8.6 million came to Uganda using the Northern Corridor. That is a lot of cargo passing through the corridor, especially passing through the two entry and exit points of Malaba and Busia. Mostly using the road. Yes. But Kenya also introduced the SGR up to Nairobi. Part of that tonnage now comes to Nairobi and again joins the road. A small percentage comes through the old rail. The government of Kenya is encouraging use of the standard bridge rail, which is part of the Northern Corridor. Talking about encouraging, uh, so uh, here basically in Uganda we are discussing about multimodal, we are talking about the, 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 the utilization of water transport, especially Lake Victoria. How does the, the Northern Corridor link to the Lake Victoria, maybe the port of Kisumu? Now, uh, I said one of the mandate of the Northern Corridor is the inland waterways. The most important one is Lake Victoria. Yes. Now, coming from Mombasa, either by the old rail, which now is not existing, especially between Nakuru and Kisumu. Now, using the road, there has been encouragement that you can still use the water transport okay. when you reach Kisumu. Yes. Either for internal trade, all with the cargo coming from Mombasa. You reach Kisumu, you come by water transport. And I said also the corridor includes the pipeline. The Kenya government has already uh, completed a jetty, an oil jetty in Kisumu. Yes. The government of Uganda, through private sector, has also completed one on the other side, uh, which is ready to be commissioned. Now, you can get now oil from Kisumu by water transport, which is more safer, safer and less expensive. Remember, when you reach a place like uh, Malaba, using Eldoret, carrying oil, sometimes you get a queue of those uh, transporters carrying oil. There is issues to do with safety. Yes. So it is more safer now using the water transport. Okay, looking at the area of uh, standard gauge railway, I think it's a new mode of transport that looks to be so much encouraged. And uh, of course, Kenya has done its bit. Uh, of course, we still have some stretch to cover from Naivasha to Malaba. Uganda, we are yet to start. And uh, we are aware there was a recent directive. I don't know, you're from the Northern Corridor, you must be aware of this. Maybe you can give us an insight of this new directive whereby maybe cargo people, uh, let me say freighters, uh, uh, say importers are meant to pick their cargo directly from Naivasha. That means if you're importing cargo from China, you might have not to go all the to get a truck down to Mombasa, but get it from Naivasha and down to, to Kampala. Is it, uh, is, it, is it, how is it going? Uh, what the government of Kenya has done 
they have completed now the SGR from Nairobi to Naivasha. They are working on the infrastructure in Naivasha. Uh, Kenya Post Authority is to make an inland container depot yes, yes. at Naivasha. Uh, the government of Uganda has been offered 10 acres of land, okay. same to the government of South Sudan okay. in Naivasha. Now, the idea is the cargo can be distinct straight from Mombasa, Mombasa. to to, to, the, to, the, uh, to ICD, to, to ICD yeah. all directly, maybe, yes. to the ICD belonging to Uganda. Uganda. Now, from there, there are two ways. Uganda importers could use the old rail okay. the, from the meter gauge rail, the meter gauge rail yes. all the way to Kampala. They could either use it through Nairobi, because there is an intermodal exchange uh -huh. in Nairobi, yes, but the government where, where of... Where is that located? In Embakasi? In, in Embakasi. Okay. Or, when it eventually is completed, they can use the interchange which is planned around Naivasha area to come by rail. I'm aware also that the government of Kenya is making the roads to that proposed ICDs so that the trucks from Uganda contaminate at Naivasha. Okay. One of the things they'll do is to make a marshalling yard for trucks to park and be able to take cargo from Naivasha without congesting Nairobi and Embakasi.